In this video, we will show conditional value at risk portfolio optimization in the financial toolbox using the portfolio CVAR object. Using these tools, you can perform your entire portfolio optimization workflow from defining the portfolio problem to evaluating the efficient frontier to setting up a record of purchase and sales. Conditional value at risk, or CVAR, takes a look at the losses in the tail end of the distribution of scenarios. For example, say I choose my portfolio and calculate the losses for several different scenarios. The losses might look something like this plot, where the scenarios with the highest loss are on the right. We define a probability level, here it's 95%, and consider the scenarios whose losses exceed this level. The 95% mean conditional value at risk is defined as the average of the losses in these scenarios. Now let's see how the tools can be used. First, we'll load in daily close prices for some large cap stocks, small cap stocks, and bond ETFs. The data is coming from a Yahoo connection. You can also connect to Bloomberg, FactSet, Thomson Reuters, and others using the data feed toolbox. We'll convert the close prices to returns data for our analysis, and then do a quick sanity check on the returns to make sure everything looks right. As expected, the small cap stocks have a higher variance in the returns, while the bond ETFs vary less. We'll combine all of our returns data into a single matrix to be used in the analysis. Everything I need for setting up the CVAR portfolio problem is right here. I start by creating a portfolio CVAR object, and then use the methods of that object to specify the assets in my portfolio, the returns data, the basic portfolio weight constraints, and the probability level. By defining the probability level to be 0 0.95, we're choosing to minimize the average loss in the 5% of portfolios with the highest losses. Now we have everything defined that we need for the CVAR portfolio optimization problem, so let's plot 10 portfolios along the efficient frontier. Here we have the CVAR efficient frontier, which is the mean portfolio return plotted against the mean conditional value at risk. It's a good idea to compare the results of different portfolio optimization models to see if they agree. Another common portfolio optimization formulation is mean variance. If we look at an example plot of portfolio returns, the mean variance risk is the variance at one sigma standard deviations. It's important to note that this method assumes that the returns are well approximated by a normal distribution. So let's calculate the mean variance efficient frontier and compare it to our CVAR frontier. The workflow is very similar to the CVAR portfolio workflow, except that we use the estimate asset moments method now to estimate the mean and covariance of our return data. We'll calculate the efficient frontier for this portfolio, but if I would like to compare this result to my CVAR result, I need a way to convert from one risk measure to the other. Well, one way to do this is to calculate the mean variance risk of the CVAR portfolios and then add the converted frontier to the mean variance plot. As you can see, the frontiers are similar with some differences in these areas. A different way to compare the results is to look at the weights of the efficient portfolios. We'll visualize the weights side by side using an area plot. This allows us to see where the allocation differences are in our efficient portfolios. While the frontiers were similar for these two risk measures, the allocation of certain assets, for example AGG, varies quite a bit. At this point, we might want to do some further investigation to see why the results of the portfolio optimizations differ. Let's look at a histogram of the returns for our bond ETFs. If we try to fit a normal distribution to this data, it becomes evident that a normal distribution may not be a good assumption to make. This helps explain the difference between our mean variance portfolio, which assumes that returns are normally distributed, 
and our CVAR portfolio, which uses simulations that don't necessarily need to be normal. This demonstration showed some of the more commonly used features for CVAR portfolios. With the CVAR portfolio object, you can also specify buy and sell costs for individual assets and set group and turnover constraints, which allow you to place an upper bound on the purchases and sales. For more information, please select the link from this page or return to the Financial Toolbox page.